Here at the Handmade Soap Company, we are delighted to be teaming up with a number of local artesian producers. Today we are at Dominic Grison's farm in County Mead to help milk his goats, which we will then be using in the first of a limited edition collection of creative, interesting and skin-friendly soaps. Uh, milking them <coughs> is very relaxing, and very soothing, but there's a definite knack to it. You, you've got this master. To well, you. I wouldn't say master, but yeah, pra- uh, it comes with practice. I remember my dad milking, and um, we had an old, um, a Charley cross Frisian cow, and he used to milk this cow for the house. And like that, I used to go in when he'd be finishing up and practice. It's definitely an acquired skill. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, and it looks very easy when you're doing it. We're going to be using some of your goat's milk to make soap, because goat's milk, it's very moisturising for the skin, it has lovely traditional healing properties and so on. What do you use a lot of goat's milk for? Yeah, we make ice cream. Um, I hope to go back to making yoghurt. Yeah. And um, also cheese. So we have a goat's milk soap from Dominic's farm, and here we are at a good friend of mine, Andrew Cassidy's house, and we're going to make some goat's milk soap. So soap, very simply, is made by mixing an acid and an alkali. So for our acid, we're using various plant and botanical oils and fats, which are here. And then we're going to use for our alkali, sodium hydroxide, which is commonly known as caustic soda. You mix those two together, they go through a process called saponification, and what is left after that process is soap. Okay, so this is a recipe I formulated myself down in the factory. Um, We're not going to use any palm oil in this, which is commonly used in soap making. We are trying to move all of our soaps away from palm oil. Currently we do use sustainable palm oil, but for this particular recipe we're going to use coconut oil, shea butter, cocoa butter, sweet almond oil, pumice grade olive oil. The recipe we're going to put up here for you now. And uh, obviously as well the goat's milk. Normally when you make soap, you mix water with the sodium hydroxide. For this goat's milk soap, we're going to replace all the water with the goat's milk, which we've just got from up at Dominic's farm. So we used to make goat's milk a couple of years ago. We always found there was a bit of a funny smell off it and I couldn't get my head around why it was. After investigating, I realized that when you mix the sodium hydroxide with the goat's milk, it heated it to about 75 plus degrees, and this scorched the goat's milk, which gave it a funny smell. Now, it always made a lovely bar of soap, but it took a few weeks for the smell to dissipate. So, after a bit of experiment, and I found the way around this was to actually freeze the goat's milk soap before you mix the sodium hydroxide with it, and this keeps the temperature of the reaction way down, and saves the goat's milk soap from being scorched. So this reaction is dangerous and caustic. Sodium hydroxide is by far the most common alkali used for making soap, but it can be quite dangerous. So when you pour any liquid upon it, it becomes very corrosive and will easily burn through flesh. So we highly recommend wearing very strong gloves and long sleeves when doing this. Always pour the sodium hydroxide into liquid and never the other way around. Okay, so now we have our ingredients in the pots. We need to get them to the same temperature before we mix them. We found through years of trial and error that the ideal temperature for making soap, particularly in Ireland, is 36 degrees Celsius. So we're heating our oils up to 36, and generally we have to cool our lye down to 36. But because we've frozen the goat's milk, we need to actually just heat it slightly. Okay, so now we have the lye and the the fats at the right temperature. They're both at about 36 degrees. What we're going to do is pour the lye into the fats, always that way, never the other way around. Mix it with a hand blender until we reach something called trace. So, I'll show you what that is now. So trace is the point where the mixture is ready to add whatever fragrance you're you're using. When when the mixture hits trace, it means that the saponification process is well underway. When you drizzle some of the mixture on top, it shouldn't absorb back into the liquid. If you add your fragrance before it hits trace, the fragrance will just dissipate and you will get no fragrance in the end product. 
We only use essential oils, pure essential oils, to fragrance, to scent our soaps. We just think it gives us a more soothing, calmer kind of smell. So this is a blend I've put together down in the factory. This is lavender, rosemary, thyme and mint. We're just going to use this. We just think it'll suit the gold smell quite well. Put that in, give it a mix through, and then we're ready to pour it in the mould. We're just going to pour the mixture into the mould and let it settle. So this is our first collaboration. That's our fresh made goat's milk soap. And this is some we prepared earlier. And we're actually going to be selling a few of these as a limited edition on the website. So hope you enjoyed it and we'll be looking forward to the next one.